Okay, so with that simple conversion stuff done, I'm going to go ahead and clear my programming window. I'm just going to erase this code because I don't need it anymore. And let's look at how we can use the modulo command to apply to a, to a clock so that your numbers follow traditional clock rules. Um, there's two types of clocks. There's the 12 hour clock that most people are familiar with where you know, it starts at midnight and then it goes 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., eventually ending at noon, which is 12 o'clock p.m., and then 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. Uh, you can also have the military clock, which works at uh, 24 hour blocks. So instead of 1 p.m., you'll have 1,300 hours. Instead of 11 p.m., you'll have 2,300 hours. Uh, it's simply done by adding 12 to whatever the uh, p.m. time is. Again, you have 2 p.m., you add 12 to that, and that becomes 1,400. Uh, if you want to do military time, it's the concepts work the same, but we're going to be looking at a 12-hour clock because that's what most people are familiar with looking at most of the time. So let's go ahead and say that the, the time is 10 o'clock. Now, I don't know whether it's a.m. or p.m., but the, the time on the clock is, is 10 o'clock, and you're going to work a shift of four hours. You're going to be out of the house for, for four hours. So if you left at 10, you come back, it's going to be 2 o'clock. But if I were to simply print time plus work, it returns 14. And that's pretty simple mathematics. What do we do because it's supposed to be 2 p.m.? That's where the modulo command is going to come in. If I take, we'll even call this new time. New time is time plus work. And let's adjust our print statement to print new time. See, we're still getting 14. If I take this and use the modulo command to get the remainder after dividing it by 12, I can see that I'm returning the number of 2. That's because, I mean, really the number is 14, but 14 divided by 12 is 1 with a remainder of 2, and that takes us to 2 o'clock. So all we have to do is use the modulo command by the number of hours we want our clock to work on, and you've got a working clock. I, if I did the same thing, let's say, uh, let's go on a 24-hour clock, or a military clock, it's still going to return 14, because 14 divided by 24 is 0 with a remainder of 14, so it's you know, technically 1,400 hours. But if I had, say, uh, I was going to be out of the house for 15 hours, it's 10 o'clock when I leave, I'm out for 15 hours, that means I'm cutting, coming back at 2,500 hours. In military time, that would be 1 o'clock in the morning, and I can see I'm getting a 1 o'clock in the morning here. Now, coincidentally, 0, 100 hours is the same as 1 a.m. So let's go ahead and change this back to 12. When I run this, I'm still getting 1. And that's because 25 divided by 24 is 1 with a remainder of 1. 25 divided by 12 is 2 with a remainder of 1. So this modulo command is just returning the remainder, and it happens to be 1 in both cases. So using the modulo command with the number of hours that you want your clock to run on will help you kind of scale the clock as it rolls over those critical times. It will reset it back so that the number is never over 12. So one important feature that our little clock application is missing right here is the ability to distinguish AM from PM. Now, there are different ways to do this. We're going to work through a real rudimentary way to do this. Now, are there other ways to do it? Of course there are. But uh, this right here is probably one of the most basic ways, and it will help you think through the process of converting AM to PM. And so let's go ahead and we're going to have the work be zero hours. So we're just going to input a time. And right now we'll call it uh, 10 o'clock. And we're going to be adding a suffix to this. And the suffix is going to be equal to am. And I'm going to change my print statement so that I'm using my string notation. And I'm going to print first the time, or the new time, sorry, followed by the suffix. So when I run this program now, 
and see it's printing 10 a.m. That's perfect. Time goes to 11. It's printing 11 a.m. Uh, I'm not going to provide 12 as an example because we already know that's broken and needs to be fixed, but let's put 13 in there. 13, loop back to 1, but now it's still saying a.m. So we need a way to intuitively switch back and forth from a.m. to p.m. And of course, if we had you know, 25 as the time, we're going through one full day and ending back up at 1 a.m. But right now, our suffix is always stuck on a.m. So let's reset this back to 10. We'll say that we're starting at 10 a.m. But at 1300, we want this to read 1 p.m as opposed to 1 a.m. as it does right now. So what we're going to do, again, there's more effective ways or efficient ways to do this, but just for, for example purposes, we're going to create uh, a new variable and we're going to call it calculated time. And calculated time is going to be time plus work. And instead of the modulo command, we're going to use integer division of 12. So what this means is right now, it's going to return the calculated time will be zero. That means we've looped through the clock zero times. When time equals 1300, we'll have looped through the clock one full time plus one. So the calculated time at 1300, let's even go ahead and print this. So we're going to print the calculated time. At 10 o'clock, you can see our calculated time here is zero. We've gone through the 12 hour clock zero times. However, if I go to 1300, I'm getting 1. That means we've gone through the 12-hour clock once, and we're restarting over. In essence, that, mean, that 1 means we've been through the clock once, and now it is p.m. Now, if we go to 2300 hours, that's still 11 p.m., you can see that our calculated time is still returning 1. When we bump the time up to 25, our calculated time is 2. Now, it doesn't go back to zero, but what that's saying is we've been through the clock two whole times. We've gone through one 12-hour cycle, we've gone through another 12-hour cycle, and now we are starting on our third. But since we started counting from zero, it's returning two. If we go up to 37, at 37 hours, we've been through the clock three times, and it's one o'clock. So the time isn't the time variable isn't necessarily a time. It's the number of hours that have elapsed since zero. Our new time is calculating this by using the modulo command to always make sure it's within 12 hours. The calculated time variable is keeping track of how many 12 hour cycles we've gone through. But what you'll notice is this. If we start at AM, AM is zero. When we get to PM, PM has a calculated time of one. And then we cycle through again, go back to AM, and that's a calculated time of 2. And then when we get back to 1 PM, that's a calculated time of 3. So our calculated time variable, whenever it's even, we're looking at an AM time. Whenever it's odd, we're looking at a PM time. And if we know that, we can write an if statement to easily change back and forth between AM and PM. So if the calculated time divided by 2 equals 1, we know we have an odd number. And if the number is odd, then our suffix is going to be equal to PM. If our calculated time divided by 2 is equal to 0, then we know our suffix is an AM time. So let's take our time back to 10 o'clock and run this program now. In fact, I'm going to take the calculated, well, I will leave that in here. So you can see we're returning 10 a.m., and that's because 0 is considered to be an even number. We get to 11 a.m., and now we go to 13, and our number will switch to p.m. That's because our calculated time has now become odd. We've gone through the 12-hour clock an odd number of times, which means we're on the second half of a 12-hour cycle, or p.m., if I bump this up to 2300, this should be the equivalent of 11 p.m. And of course, it does return 11 p.m. and our calculated time is still 1. 11 p.m. plus 2 hours takes us to 25 hours since 0. And that should be the equivalent of 1 a.m. 
And it is 1 a.m., but our calculated time as earlier is 2. We've been through the entire clock once, and we're now back to an even number. And I can really do this for any time I want. I could say, if we start counting from 0, after 247 hours, it will be 7 a.m. Now, that means we've gone through 20 cycles of clock. We've gone through the 12-hour cycle 20 times, which is an even number, and that means we're on the first half of a 12-hour cycle. Are there easier, more effective ways to do that? Sure. But if you can understand how this works right here, you've got a really good grasp on how AM and PM will work in your programs. So let's go ahead and move on to this week's challenge program, which will be an extension of kind of what you've seen right here. This week's challenge program admittedly doesn't have a lot of substance to it. Um, it's kind of more of a demo than it is a game. It doesn't use any random elements and you can win or lose pretty much on command. So the game is called Travel North the Game and it's a game I wrote in probably five, ten minutes here as I was trying to think of some way to provide an example of the stuff we did during this lesson. Your job is to travel north ten miles. If you can reach your destination by 3 a.m., you win. If you don't reach your northern destination by 3 a.m., you lose. So the first thing that the game does is it's got a variable that keeps track of how far north you've gone. And if you go north, it adds one to that variable. And if you go south, it subtracts one. And the game doesn't account for east or west uh, insofar as it doesn't necessarily affect your distance. However, it does affect the time. Now you can see the game starts at 11.15 p.m. Every time you make a move, it's going to add 15 minutes to the clock, and when you get to 3 a.m., the game is over. Or if you've traveled 10 miles north, the game will be over and you've won. So let's start by traveling north. And the game says you travel one mile north. You have now traveled north one mile. It's now 11.30 p.m. Make a selection. So let's go north again. You travel one mile north, you've now traveled two miles north, it's 11.45 p.m., make a selection. So this time I'm going to go east, and it says you've traveled one mile east, you've now traveled north two miles, because of course this is travel north, the game. It is 12 a.m., so we just rolled over till midnight, my suffix has changed from, AM, uh, from p.m. to a.m., so let's go north again. You've traveled north one mile. We've now gone three miles north. It's 12.15 a.m. And the game continues like this, constantly checking for the, di the direction the user went, adjusting the time in 15-minute increments, and then deciding whether or not the game has been won. The game also accounts for if I go south, I travel one mile south, and the number of miles north that I've traveled is now only two. That's because I've gone one mile in the wrong direction. So if we continue playing this, let's go north. We're now three, four, five miles north. It's 1.15 a.m. North, six miles, seven miles. And then we're going to go south and east and west. It's now 2.30 a.m. We've only gone north six miles. So at this point, it's impossible to win the game. I travel north. You've now traveled north eight miles. You have failed to reach your destination by three o'clock game over. And of course, it will register a victory as well. If I just keep traveling north, I've now gone four miles, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it's 1.30 a.m. I travel north, and you've arrived at your destination prior to three o'clock, and you win. Now, is this a super fun game? Of course it's not. But it does have the the you know, semblance of a text adventure game where you can travel around a map, it keeps track of how far north you've gone, and then most importantly, it uses this this time system that we talked about in this lesson, converting AM to PM, uh, recognizing midnight, recognizing noon. This one happens to work in 15 in minute increments, but that's really the goal of this week's challenge program is can you work with time in this particular adventure game it's still not real time but there is a time element to it in that the game knows how many turns it's been running and can react after a certain amount of time has passed so that is your goal can you create a program similar to the one that i wrote that is this week's challenge program 
As always, if you have any questions about how it was done or problems you're having with your programs, you are welcome to leave those questions in the comments and I will get back to you and try and help you out any way that I can. Uh, until next time, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.